Jesus, you're the center, the center of it all. And I believe that's what God has also done for us, even through this time where we were learning him to really bring us seriously focused, seriously focused on the very life we're supposed to carry, which is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so we do thank God for that. Before I introduce our panelists, just want to, again, uh, let us know that there's a um, this is actually going to be our actually last time coming together uh, on this actually Zoom call uh, for this year. Um, God has given us uh, much, much has been given to us. And so um, this will be the last um, uh, Saturday that we'll be meeting from all over the world. But thank God it won't be the last time just for this time. We're actually going to be coming back on January the 14th. And so there's just some time to where we can continue to go over everything because what we're going to do today is we're actually going to review the entire, well, almost the entire uh, book of the Kingdom Lifestyle. There'll be a few chapters, the last four or five chapters that are still fresh that were just done, but the beginning of the book, we're going to go through that. So just know everyone, just take a note that this is going to be our uh, final time right now this year before we go into our next year on the 14th. And then, but lo just don't know, there's, there's a lot still here. The MLR actually will be starting next week on the 7th. Um, we'll be here in the United States, uh, in Birmingham, Alabama, but all over where you are, there are centers um, there. So if you haven't got connected, you should be connected by now. But if not, uh, please do so. Um, it'll be also um, connections in different ways. I know it may be played a little later on, on maybe the Zoom or MixLR and the other ones. But if you want to actually be um, in, in the actual service, they're connected together, we'll be together. And then crossover. There's always God leading us over from the end of 2022 and 2023. So there'll be actually a crossover meeting that should be on Zoom. That information should all be, be coming out. So please uh, look for that and be attentive. There'll be more information on that. And so um, let's start. We're going to actually go into our panel discussion and we're going to be reviewing the entire book or close to the entire book. And so we want to welcome um, our panelists. That'll be with us today will be our brother Adoye uh, from Canada. He'll be uh, one of our panelists uh, to share with us, who's really one of the major organizers of our meetings. Uh, good morning, uh, Adoye. It's good to see you, brother. All right. Good morning. God bless you. Bless you, sir. And then we have our own sister, Melissa. I believe Melissa is in, in Kansas somewhere. She's representing the United States. Good morning, Melissa. God bless you. Good morning, all. Thank you for having me. Good, good. Give Scott our love back there. Give Scott our love. And then also our brother Joshua Williams, who's actually also in Canada. We uh, look forward to him. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. I'm well. Thank God. Good. And God bless you all. Now, everybody else, if you can't see your faces right now, sometimes there's a multiplication. You can see everybody's face. Just know this is an, an entire panel. This is an entire panel discussion. We want everyone, we have our, our chat, you know, even if you send it through uh, a what's up and I'll be trying to work the, the, the chat thing and try to do my best is to send in your input. Please send in your comments. If there's times we'll take questions. This is an entire panel because one of the things that the Lord wants us to do is to, this is a practical life. This is something God gave to us, not to just say, oh, we've learned something good and we have learned something good. This has been, I know for me, uh, life changing, uh, but this is a practical discussion on how what God has spoke to us through this kingdom lifestyle, learning all these practicals of blessed are these, these things that Jesus taught us uh, to be active in our life. And so if there's some place if there's some area where you've actually stepped into this living word and that word has boom and it came alive in your life. We want you to practically send it in so we can actually share it um, right before we get into our panel discussion. Uh, believe us, we're going to start. And um, if you have your, your books, um, we, we're all, we were in Matthew chapter five, that where it started. And I'll just share this as we get a chance to start. And we're going to be looking at, matter of fact, our first two chapters, which was on the Mount with Jesus or on the Mount with the Lord. And then who is a disciple? And that was the, the first two chapters that we started with. 
and and, and uh, Doye, Melissa, and Josh, and everyone around the world. I was actually I went back to look at the very first um, the first time we actually had this meeting on this. It was it last year sometime? Didn't even know I was the one that actually was the moderator that day. So I looked and there was me on the screen and I was actually, I'd actually just finished taking a bath and I got out of there. And what we learned in that first chapter was going to the Mount or coming up to be up with the Mount with the Lord. And um, one of the things that was brought out in that very first chapter was the importance of Jesus coming up with his disciples, taking them away from the crowd. Now, my brother, my sisters, I'm not sure how that affected your life, but if you are, if you, if sometimes, you know, you just, you love being around people, you love having a good time and fellowship and everything, but when the Lord acts you and brings you and takes you away from everyone else, that that's a little something. And he brought, he said, he brought his disciples up to the Mount. He sat down and he taught them. And then one of the things that I actually went back and I was listening to was the very first time when it was really brought out about when Abraham in that 22nd chapter of the 21st chapter of, of Genesis, when God say, Abraham, Abraham, come on, let's go away. Let's go up to the mount because I want you to sacrifice, bring your son to sacrifice him, the son that you love. Y'all, I was standing there, had just got myself dressed and I was listening to something. It was something, you guys, deep in my heart that I've been kind of kind of working with and hanging on. And the Lord says, he said to me, now, now this is all I can say. I felt this, this thing in my heart to come up because the Lord was asking for this thing I loved. That happened to me last. And I said, what, what, what do you mean? I said, Lord, now it could be something, y'all, something you love that could be something that has been a blessing to you. But let me share something else with you. It could be something that may have hit your heart, something that may have rocked your, you know, really maybe even hurt your heart. But sometimes if you keep it so long and it begins to be yours for so much, you will start to embrace it, even if it's if it's perfect or if it's painful. And it was something that happened. And I was like, I've been minding this thing. Man. And the Lord says, I want you to bring that to me because it's something you've taken it as your own. And I said, Lord, this right here. And the Lord said this right here. So I got my time to get away with the Lord. And I had to say, Lord, I got to surrender this to you because it's something that's it was it was something that you were saying. I needed to bring up to you to, to give away because this is the thing. And brother, do I want you to come in here on when he talks about the mountain and being a disciple being brought up to the mount is that if, if you're the Lord and he calls you up and he asks you, he's asking you for that thing, whether it's like I said, perfect or painful and you found out you love it. Are you willing to give it up? Because this is what I found out. Whatever you're willing to give up, God has something even greater. He wants to give you. My brother, can you just talk about on the mountain and who was a disciple? It came out of those first two chapters as well. Thank you, my brother, for that uh, introduction. Um, Several, if you look into the word of God, uh, you will see clearly that uh, men and women whom God actually uh, used in the past to, to bear his word to others, uh, each of them were summoned to the mount at one point or the other, uh, in their journey with God. And it's almost like a, a, non, a non-negotiable component of our work with God. If we will actually be made into the, the right vessel that he desires. And one of the things that also struck my own heart is that uh, the content of such, in, or such teaching, you know, whatever the Lord is saying in the mount is actually very private and is not accessible to the public. I remember many times that the Lord has cornered me at different point in my own journey uh, to just spend some time in the closet to wait upon him and you know, share some things with me. Many of those things, I don't have permission to share them. And you, I'm begging God, I'm hoping that God will help us to you know, cultivate this as a lifestyle yeah. that we will learn to uh, leave the busyness of life and deliberately lock in with God and spend quality time with him. It is very clear and certain that men are never made in the valley where the multitude are. You know, the valley is full of the multitude. Yeah. But to climb the mount, it's not uh, something that many people want to do. If you look at that scripture in Matthew uh chapter 5, verse 1 and 2, where we started from. The Bible says that 
seeing the multitude, he went up into the mount. And, you know, by that, it's like Jesus Christ raising the bar that if you really mean business, come yes. up here. <laughs> if you really want to get what is in my heart, climb up. Yeah. And the Bible says clearly there that he sat down and his disciples came unto him. If you note in that scripture that it was an it was an open thing that anybody, whosoever will come, he will not stop anyone to come up there. But you will note in that scripture that the multitude just uh, stayed back and said, you know what? You go up there. Mm-hmm. We will be waiting here. When you finish, you come and meet us here. Yeah. And people in the valley that are always not ready to go the extra mile to go with God, they never amount to anything in God. Yeah. So he opened his mouth and he taught them. So all that we have been learning all these 14 months, by the grace of God, I, will, I can say authoritatively that these are for disciples. Yes. And I see him actually drawing us every Saturday. You know, it takes a deliberate effort to ensure that you come to this Bible study every Saturday. Okay. Saturdays is when you probably have birthdays, you have weddings, you have so many other social things. So if you are not really deliberate, you cannot be committed to coming to this mount. So the Lord, as I see this provision as God's mercies coming our way for the last 14 months, almost like the Lord sum- summoning us to the mount and say, hey, come up here. Yeah. And everybody that will take the deliberate step to join is actually logging in to the Lord Jesus Christ himself to have him sit over our life, uh, to, to, to sit on us and to actually make us who he wants us to be. So the true disciples are learners. Yeah. They always they have this humble spirit of wanting to learn mm-hmm. at the feet of the master. If I may also say that a disciple, according to Matthew 11, 29, 30, 29 to 30, is one who has voluntarily yielded his neck even to the yoke of our Lord Jesus Christ, the yoke of discipleship. He's yeah. committed to actually following the Lord, no matter what the cause is. So when other priorities are contending for our attention, you know the one to go for because you know the yoke that is on your neck. And you know there's no neck that is free. If you are not yoked with Jesus, you are yoked with other things. Yeah. There's no neck that is absolutely just there and nothing on it. But really, if you have committed your life to this way and you, are, you have a single focus and you are ready to learn, the Lord is ready to sit over your life and make yes. you who he wants you to be. God bless you. Bless you. And thank you for that, uh, bringing that input. Uh, My brothers and sisters, remember this. um, And it's something because um, we we are now right now. And I know depending on where you are in the world and in your country, wherever you are, if there's something that actually want to actually uh, flood you into where the the masses are, you know, be it through the media, through it, through social media, through just what's going on. It's like everything is kind of flooded, even trying to flood the minds of those who are committed to walking with Jesus. And so if you can hear this afresh and again in your heart, come up to the mount. If your mind, if your mind, come up again. That may, that may be just another spark. You know, you may have been doing it. I know it was a refreshing breath of fresh air because sometimes I think I'm coming. And I'm like, okay, I'm, but there's almost this thing of kind of wanting to relax a little bit, but there's a refreshing with Jesus of come up again. Let's go a little further right now. And we're going to look through some of the, the Beatitudes. Um, um, just per se, if we were in, uh, 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 again, in Matthews 5, verse uh, 3, it says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Melissa, if we could, if you could, we talk about the poor in spirit. What does it mean to be poor in spirit? And how to know that you personally, because, you know, we want to personally put our paws on this, personally put this. How to know, do are we poor in spirit? Yes. So as you read, the scripture says, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Um, So what does it mean to be poor? We think of being poor is to lack, to, um, to not have to be in need of, 
or to be dependent. We think of the poor in the land are very dependent uh, for their needs to be met, for their resources, for even life. Um, so that's, that's you know, a, a simple way to say what is poor. Um, in that same scripture, the good news translation says that blessed are those who know they are spiritually poor, or the Amplify will say blessed are those who are humble or who rate themselves as insignificant. So I'm going to read Isaiah 66, uh, verse two, just part of it, where God says, on this one will I look on him who is poor and of a contrite spirit and who trembles at my word. You know, so what God is saying is that's the one he fixes his eyes on, on the one who has a need, on the one who is knowing they are dependent and they don't have. Um, And so the poor will look to the one who does have and will do whatever is needed to receive what they need. So that is what God is saying. He looks on those who know they have a need and are willing to come to him and do whatever is needed to receive what he says is good for their lives. We will be obeying him if we know that what we have is not sufficient, but what he has is good and will bring life and will further our life. Um, In many places in the Bible, we hear the Lord saying that he resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So he, he tells us again in another way, he resists those who have a high opinion of themselves. He resists those who are already satisfied with what they can do, with the knowledge they have, with the strength they have, with the resources they have. So he resists those ones, but he will give grace or he will assist. He will come in and help um, with his own divine resources, those who are humble or who, who know they have a need, who rate themselves as low and say, I have not, and I need, and he will come in and bring what is good, what is needful, which truly he alone knows and has. So if we think we already have, then we won't need him and we won't come to him and he won't look upon us and be giving us what is needful. So as always, Jesus is our ultimate pattern of this, uh, kingdom lifestyle. He is the kingdom and he showed us the lifestyle. And that's what he brought those, whoever would come up on the mat with him to, to hear, here's the lifestyle, because we learn a totally different lifestyle here on earth. He alone knows that lifestyle and live that lifestyle. He was lowly in heart. He wasn't puffed up. He wasn't, he, he himself said in John five, that the son of himself can do nothing. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, if anyone knew he could do something and had what it took, it would have been Jesus. But even Jesus humbled himself and said, I can't, I am needy. And I, as he, when he came as a man, he said, I am needy and I am dependent on God, the father to receive whatever resources are needed for life. So I'm just going to end with the um, scripture in the living Bible from Mm -hmm. Philippians Mm 2, 5 through 9, if I may. Yes. Okay, it says, here's our instruction. Your attitude should be the kind that was shown us by Jesus Christ, who, though he was God, did not demand and cling to his rights as God, but laid aside his mighty power and glory, taking the disguise of a slave and becoming like men. And he humbled himself even further going as far as to actually die a criminal's death on a cross. Yet it was because of this that God raised him up to the heights of heaven and gave him a name, which is above every name, every other name. So Jesus, he understood, he knew he was spiritually poor when he came to earth as a man. And as like the scripture said, blessed are those who know they are spiritually poor for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus, our Lord received the kingdom of heaven as he lived this lifestyle on earth. Amen. Thank you. 
Um, because I know for, for myself, when we were hearing about poor in spirit and, and have no need of things, you know, we almost have our sections of what we don't need. You know, we, this right here, we have need, 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 but over here we can handle it. And so Melissa, what you were really saying that bringing back the point out there and my brothers and sisters, again, we have to look into our own heart. I know here as men in the, in the U S you know, we're learning that you don't, you don't need that. You just, you're, you're the total provider, everything and all that stuff. But when this came into our lives about actually being poor, where you need, God, you need God for everything everything and you know we start walking to this you know what i found out need god for everything for everything thank you for that um we want to go now, now joshua she's talked about uh, being poor in spirit chapter uh that ver the next verse we had and we're going to continue to walk just walk through each chapter we had uh chapter four was blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted Josh, if you could take, what does it mean to mourn this kind of mourning? Because there's there's different kind of mornings. I mean, there's the morning when we get up in the morning, and there's you know the morning where you know we we you know we can just be crying because we done our coffee done got cold. But this ha this had a this had something different when Jesus talked with this morning. And then uh, what kind of morning is this? And then how should we as Christians how this morning how how should this work through our lives? Thank you, sir. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting to, to see that mourning is part of this lifestyle, you know, um, in our, in our modern day society, um, you know, mourning is not something that we really do until somebody dies. Um, you know, it's, but Jesus said, it's, it's blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. It, it's a lifestyle. It's not just a, 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 an occasional uh, thing, right? And, um, you know, but as believers, aren't we supposed to be blessed or prosperous? So why is mourning part of this whole uh, lifestyle? And, um, you know, because it means that, uh, that we express sorrow over the loss of something or, or even someone. Um, so, you know, being having uh, someone that's mourning over the death of a loved one is not is not incorrect. Um, but what I'm saying is that there is something that happens to us when we mourn. And uh, you know, going through the study, uh, the Lord kept pointing back to our hearts because this is where uh, mourning starts. This is where being poor in spirit, as Sister Melissa mentioned, this is where all these things start. It starts in our hearts, right? Because uh, mourning, that's what it does. It touches the very heart of our being. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it just, uh, uh, the I believe the, the book was saying something like the, you know, it's the, it's the beginning of even repentance. So it shows us that we can even mourn over, a sin that we've committed, or a, even the lifestyle that we've that we've been li been living, that the Lord can even use mourning to help us to to live live correctly, uh, live a life that is pleasing uh, to Him. And you know, in um, in Joel chapter two, uh, it talks about uh, that we should rend our hearts and not our garments when it when it comes to mourning when it's uh so it, it shows us that the lord is looking there the the it's the it's a matter of our hearts and in verse 13 of joel chapter 2 it says that we should uh when we rend our hearts and not our garments it says return to the lord your god for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger uh and with great kindness and he re he relents from doing harm, so we see that uh, mourning is not a um, I don't know how to say it like maybe like a negative type of uh, thing, right? Because right. Uh, it's mourning actually makes our heart better, if 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 I can say that. And uh, you know, if we take 
the, the Matthew 5, verse 4, if we look at it from the, the, the tail end of the scripture, it says, for mm-hmm. they shall be comforted. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times we are working hard, we are doing all these things to, to, per, to build comfort for ourselves, whether it's working hard, you know, gaining money, doing this, buying a house, getting all these things, and putting them in place to com- give, give ourselves comfort so that we don't have to experience mourning. But the Bible says that it is those that are mourning that will receive comfort. So it's not something that we have to go out and do and build comfort for ourselves and build things so that we are, are, are okay, but it is a blessing. It is a, a beatitude. It is a lifestyle uh, of those disciples that if they are mourning, even in mourning, they can be comforted. They don't have to worry because they know their mourning is in Christ. It is Jesus himself that is holding the, holding him, holding us in his hands. So we yes. know that uh, comfort is a guarantee if our heart is even mourning. So we don't have to worry about anything or chase any after anything except yes. Jesus Christ. Thank you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Josh. Because um, when... You know, I, all I heard was as you know, young person and growing up and not necessarily understanding this was mourning is that I just need to be crying all the time and I'm not a crier, you know, mourning or it must be something behind something negative. But then we, we're learning through the, the, the word of God that if our, like you said, if our hearts, it's, it's for a reason, it's for it's it's for the betterment of and I pray that. Um, as we're we're going through, and there's so much, there's so there's a lot of stuff even that we look out that's going on even in the world right now, that'll actually will bring you to tears. But the Lord wants us as Christians to have that because it says, "Blessed morning, they shall be comforted." Amen. In 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 verse five, and it was in I believe it's in chapter five, it talked about blessed are the meek. Let me just read that. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Brother Doye, what does it mean to be meek? And if there's somebody in the Bible, or that's an example, even for yourself, practicals, we're still trying to, my brothers and sisters, remember y'all, this is for all of us. If you have any comments, if you have any input, please, you can send it through the chat. We want to actually get a chance to be involved and engage with that. So if there's, is there, show, tell us about meekness and the examples or something that you know about meekness, sir. Thank you, my brother. Um, meekness, as you can see from that particular scripture in Matthew 5.5, 5, uh, you know, the word of God makes it very clear that blessed are those who are meek, uh, said, for they shall inherit the earth. If you now take that uh, particular uh, scripture and read it in other translations, uh, mm-hmm. we will be able to see and get a ble- better uh, understanding of what the meaning of uh, you know, morning is. So I'll just quickly scan to a few uh, mm-hmm. okay. in a few minutes. The NLT translation says, God bless those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole hurt. Uh, another translation says, I'm looking for another translation that doesn't use, uh, okay, New American Standard Bible says, blessed are the gentle, for they will inherit the earth. Uh, now, the Amplified Classic uh, is the one that I'm just going to, uh, the Amplified version, I'll read that and then move on. Is it blessed, inwardly peaceful, spiritually secure, worthy of respect, are the gentle, the kind-hearted, the sweet-spirited and self-controlled, for they shall inherit uh, the earth. So we can pick a few things from those definitions that meekness, is often defined by gentleness, lowliness of mind, mm-hmm. not self-willed, um, mm-hmm. easily entreated. Someone who, uh, if you say somebody is easygoing, mm-hmm. uh, you know, is not somebody that can easily be offended because of their position, their heart disposition. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Luke six twenty nine. Is the scripture that actually gives us a clear understanding of this very well. And I'm going to quickly read that. Uh, Luke mm-hmm. 6 29 it says, I read the NLT version. He said, If someone slaps you on one cheek, mm. offer the other cheek also. 
If someone demands your coat, offer your shirt also. You see, that scripture brings it out clearly that, hey, um, you are not the type that want to defend yourself, even if they, somebody have actually wrongly done something bad to you, that you just leave that matter into the hand of God and not fight for yourself. Mm -hmm. And this particular scripture gives us a practical definition of you know, meekness. Uh, even if someone uses violence to rob you of your right, meekness will make you not to fight for yourself, but mm -hmm. trust God to fight on your behalf. Mm -hmm. uh, a man who is not, you know, uh, who is not violent is, is a meek man. One who does not fight for his own right uh, is the one that will inherit the hurt. That's what we're seeing from this scripture. Yeah. Uh, and it's really a contradiction from what we see in the word system. The word system say, fight for your rights. Right. right. Uh, don't allow yeah. anybody to rob you. Demand your right. So it, mm -hmm. it's the opposite of what the word system is saying. Uh, mm -hmm. But yet, even what is looking like foolishness, uh, you know, is, is the wisdom of God, as we're seeing it clearly. I'll give two quick examples in the word of God. The Bible talks about uh, Moses. Is the, mm -hmm. the Bible says in Numbers 12, 3, that he is the man that is the meekest man under the earth. You know what happened in that particular scripture? He was the one leading the entire nation on the journey to, to, to Canaan land. And yet two of his own siblings, Miriam and Aaron, mm -hmm. came. And spoke against him. And, he, you know, uh, is it only Moses that God is talking to? We are also prophets here. Mm -hmm. I know what Moses did not say anything. You know, yeah. what is interesting to me is that in mm -hmm. verse 4 of that scripture, the Bible says, and the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses. So the Lord heard what happened. Moses did not go and report to God. Mm -hmm. Moses did not say, oh, you did it to me. I'm going to, I'm going to take your case to God. The Lord heard what happened? And he said, okay, I'm going to summon you guys and he summoned them right away to, mm -hmm. to deal with them. And even when he started doing that, Moses started ble pleading for them. Can ah, you imagine? Yeah. If, we're, mm -hmm. if it were you and me, wouldn't I say, oh yes, God catch you. And like right. we say in my place, that yes, good for you. Good right. for you. God <laughs> has, you know, actually, you know, you know, taking over. You will be so excited. Yeah. But rather, Moses said no. Is no, no, Lord, don't do that. He was pleading mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. someone who has actually wrongly done, uh, you know, something bad to him. And Jesus actually is our greatest example. Mm -hmm. You know, I will wrap up with this in in mm -hmm. in in First Peter two verse twenty three. First uh -huh. Peter two verse twenty three talks about how he was insulted. Mm -hmm. He was he, when he was insulted when he was revived. He never responded back. You know, many yeah. times. If you, if somebody that is more powerful to you has done, if somebody that is less powerful to you has done something wrong to you, mm -hmm. uh, or, or and and sorry, somebody who is very powerful than you has done mm -hmm. something wrong to you, mm -hmm. because you don't have the power, mm -hmm. you feel that no, this person is bigger than me. You just go, mm -hmm. but it's a different thing when somebody lesser than you has actually done something wrong to you. Mm -hmm. And you deliberately just say, you know what? I'm not going to use all my, my power, everything to deal with this person. That's mm -hmm. example of what I see in Jesus Christ. Because yeah. all the insults that they halted on him, it doesn't mm -hmm. take anything for Jesus to just with a finger click. Yeah. Legions of angels will mm -hmm. drop from heaven if he wants it mm -hmm. and to deal with any matter on his behalf. But yeah. he did not pull his power to mm -hmm. deal with such matter. Yeah, right. Many of us will use everything that we have to fight for mm -hmm. one small matter like this. Say, yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's my boy. I'm going to deal with him. Mm -hmm. that, is, that, is, that is actually contrary to what we see. The Bible says, right. rather, he left the matter with God. In the yeah. message translation of that particular scripture in second, mm -hmm. Bible says, they called him every name in the book and mm -hmm. he said nothing back. Right. Uh, have, have they called you every name in the book? Mm. Bible says he suffered in silence, content to let God set things right. He was contented with the fact that I'm just going to leave this in the hand of God and ah. I will not fight for myself. So meekness is a man actually saying, you know what? 
I'm just going to leave this. I'm not going to bother myself. I leave the matter in the hand of God. Whenever we decide to fight for ourselves, we actually leave God out of the equation. Ah. We limit the Holy oh. One of Israel. Okay. Many yeah. matters that God should have taken care of on our behalf. But we say, you know what, God, I can take care of this. And we, we stepped in. And God said, okay, since you can handle it, go ahead and handle it. But a meek man will not fight back, will only leave matter into the hand of God, just like we see in the example of Jesus Christ. Bless you. Amen. 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 We thank God for that, for that, for that meekness uh, uh, and giving that, that word on meekness of not wanting to, not wanting to fight back. Um, Cause that for, I don't know how many of us um, here um, that um, when we, when we sense, you know, something against us or some kind of attack against us, the first thing we do is we want to make sure we want to make sure we taken care of ourselves but we thank God for this time of meekness. So um, we're going to go keep going further. Um, as we there's uh, we went on, we have more chapters. Uh, um, talked about blessed are the merciful, the pure in heart, and the peacemaker. And so in chapter uh, seven, and we're going to kind of come back. We're going to we, we have a few chapters when talked about righteousness. We're going to do that, and then we're going to talk about the salt there. So in righteousness, uh, these matters of the heart, uh, Melissa. Um, it says, blessed are the merciful. Verse um, seven says, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. What does it mean to be merciful? And then how are our lives, in our lives, we're supposed to demonstrate that. Now, Melissa, before you go, my brother, I'm looking at my, my iPad and this charger is not charging the door. And I don't want it to need to fade out real quick. I have another charger, y'all. So, so all of us around, if you see my screen go black for a moment, I'm just running again. And hopefully this, this, this charger work. If not, <laughs> brother Dan, you might have to hook me in on this phone and log me back in. I got a, a little power there. But Melissa, if you can take this, what does it mean to be merciful? And then how do we demonstrate this in our lives? So Melissa, you keep right on going. I'll be right back. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. So Matthew 5, 7 says, blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. So what is mercy? I, you know, in that chapter seven of the book, um, it talked about mercy being a benevolence. Uh, mercy is a disposition that tempers justice or justice is, you know, what is deserved. It's tempering justice rather and rather it lends to a pardon or a lighter punishment than what is do or what is what the situation warrants it's a compassion it's a uh it's a favor showing someone favor it's a forgiving so mercy is not um something we earn uh it's not it's some it's a gift so you think of when somebody goes into court you hear the phrase i threw myself at the mercy of the court hmm. right that means me i am here i'm a defendant i have no authority in this situation. I'm at the judge's mercy. There's one who can offer me mercy. Who there's one who's going to judge this case. And he's going he or she's going to judge according to what is due me or perhaps they'll have mercy on me, show me favor, compassion, be forgiving of some of what is due me or all of what is due me and let me go free or or grant me a lighter sentence. So it's not, you know, the Bible says that God will have mercy on, okay, we know that God's the judge, right? God will have mercy on whom he will have mercy. And that it's not, uh, I think it's in Romans, it's not of the one who wills it. I want it, I want it, I want it. It's not the one who runs for it or works for it to mm. earn it, but it's of him oh, who is the benevolent one, who is the kind, forgiving, compassionate judge that grants mercy. Yeah. Now, again, we'll remi remind ourselves the scripture said, blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. So the mm -hmm. ones who obtain God's mercy are the ones who will be showing God's mercy. So the illustration for this that Jesus gave, that's a wonderful illustration comes from Matthew 18. Mm -hmm. And this is a good illustration to show this kingdom principle. So I'm not going to read it. I'm going to try to just summarize it, but I will read a couple of the key verses in it. So in Matthew 18, when Peter comes to Jesus and is asking him, you know, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother up to seven times? Like, goodness, that's a lot. 
Jesus said, I tell you not seven, but 70 times seven, you know? And so then he shows us here's, here's the illustration of what the kingdom lifestyle is like, what God is expecting of those who are his disciples. And he goes on to give the illustration. There's a King and he went to settle accounts with all of his servants. And one came, one servant came who owed him much, much money, 10,000 talents, I think it said. And he came and he couldn't pay it. So what was going to be, what was going to be um, required of him was he was going to be sold. His wife was going to be sold. His goods were going to be sold so that the payment that was due could be made. Yeah. And he came to the judge and he begged for mercy. He was at the mercy, you know, of the court, so to speak, yeah. of the king. And he um, asked if he could have more time to have patience and he could have more time. And the scripture says in um, Matthew 18, 27, it says, then the master of that servant was moved with compassion. He released him and forgave him the debt. So there's a merciful judge, a merciful king forgiving much. So then what did that servant go and do? That servant went and found somebody, one of his compadres that owed him money. Right. Right. And he he owed him a very little bit of money. The the story tells us, the parable tells us. And what did he do? He like took him by the throat and said, you better pay me my money. Mm -hmm. You know, even though it was very little and he, and he couldn't, Mm -hmm. he couldn't, that, that same one had the same plea. Will you give me more time? Will you have pain? Patience with me. I'm throwing myself at your mercy. And he said, the one that was just shown mercy said, "Uh, uh-uh, no, you will pay me everything and you're going to be in prison until you do it. Okay. So some of the other servants of the judge, the the overall Mm -hmm. king Mm -hmm. heard this, you know, saw what this one did and they knew that it was an incorrect way to be. And they went back and told the judge, told the king, Mm -hmm. Um, what he had done that he hadn't, he hadn't forgiven this one little. So the King brought him back into his presence and said, I'm going to read from verse. Um, Cause he was not happy with this servant that, that right. acted in such a way. So yes. in um, 32, I'll already start from there in that Matthew 18, it says, then his master, after he had called him, said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due him. Yes. So this is the, this is what Jesus is telling us. The kingdom of heaven is like that. Those who obtain Those who show mercy are the ones who will obtain mercy. This servant who was called wicked in the end um, did not obtain mercy. In fact, he ended up having to pay all that he owed. So Jesus is saying so late right next verse. So my heavenly father will also do to you if each of you from your heart does not forgive your brother. Right. So as we're, we continue to talk, it's a matter of the heart. It's not a matter of actions. And I even see Jesus taking this, you know, like Brother Adoy was talking about the meek, you know, not fighting for our right and those kind of things. Even when we're um, talked bad about or unjustly treated, you know, Jesus is taking it to the next level and even saying, don't, don't even just not fight, but forgive them. Yeah. Release them yeah. from owing you anything. Release them from, you know, whatever it is that yeah. you think has been done to you or, or is owed to you and forgive. And thus you will receive forgiveness from your father. Your father okay. will be showing you that kind of mercy as you are showing those Absolutely. in your life and on this earth, that kind of mercy. So if we understand if we understand our need for God's mercy, that we are what we, I guess, what is r- truly due us, what we mm-hmm. really are owed for the kind of lives we've led, for the kind mm-hmm. of um, uh, l- the lack of honor we've given the Lord or other people, even for that matter, um, mm-hmm. and that we need his mercy for salvation, first mm-hmm. and foremost, we need his mercy to do anything, to be yeah. used in his, in his service. Yeah. requires 
him showing us benevolence, him not giving us what is due us, him being compassionate toward our, our condition and our state, you know, as yeah. we come to him as weak vessels, um, knowing our need of him. So the scripture again tells us that the ones that will receive his mercy are the ones that will show mercy. May God help us in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And that's, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a very, that's a, that's a big prayerful thing is to show mercy, but the first have to come back to the mindset that it's, it's, it's me first, really. It's us first, really. It's, it's, it's not what we're going to do, but how the Lord has shown mercy on us. And that really, when, if, when we all go back and be, and I believe if we can really just look at our own lives and really look at what God has done in our own lives, because I know I, I got to go through, I got to recheck it every now and then when I figure I want to just be, you know, the, 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 the guy, I, 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 here it is, I have reason to be, to, to do what I'm about to do. You know, to to you you done something, so I I got a reason to it rather than look at saying God, how, how much mercy have you had upon me? How so that 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 refocus there, and we thank you uh, for that. I did get a charger, y'all, so I think the thing is charging up. So yeah, it's it's going back the other way. So I think we're good. There was a comment, one comment that came in the chat. I just want to read this right before Josh. We go right to the next one because we're going to be talking about the pure in heart, Josh. We're going to talk about that. It was one sentence about mourning. Just want to read this. Um, it says, "My understanding of the blessedness of mourning is twofold. Those who endure loss with faith, or endure loss with faith, patience, and trust in God, and." Those who feel a deep sorrow over the loss of righteousness in their own lives in society. Hmm. Those who feel pain and sorrow when the will of God is neglected. Such mourning will trigger us to genuinely repent and genuine intercession for society. Amen. And I, y'all, I don't want to try to, I, I'm trying to do better to pronounce my brothers and sisters' names, but I just want to raise A. N I K A H. I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna get learn how to pronounce my brother's name. I love y'all sending those those names, but I want to make sure I pronounce it right. So, Amen. Um, thank you for that input, Josh. Uh, chapter eight says, "Blessed are the pure in heart, uh, for they shall see God." Um, um, what does that mean, and what is the outcome of being pure in heart? Thank you, sir. Um... Yes, yeah, it, uh, it says in, in verse 8 of Matthew 5 that uh, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. Um, a pure in, being pure in heart is, um, is a prerequisite uh, for maintaining uh, an unbroken fellowship with the Lord. Uh, when we are, uh, when we have any, con any little contamination, in our hearts, um, it 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 removes us from the presence of the Lord. If you remember when Jesus was on the cross, you know he drank the cup of suffering, and the Lord God turned his face. The Father turned his face from the Son. It's because he cannot behold uh, iniquity. He cannot look at it. Uh, so it wasn't because he didn't love his Son. It's because of who he is, he cannot look at that. So, he, it, it, the Lord is saying that blessed are the pure in heart. So he's pointing back to the heart again. You know that we we must check our lives uh, continuously. Uh, in in Hebrews twelve fourteen it says, pursue peace with all men and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. So right there, it shows us that, um, yes, we can be, uh, we can, we can, you know, do well. We can show mercy to our brothers. We can have, we can, we can give forgiveness and everything. But without holiness, uh, the Bible says, we cannot see the Lord. And that's why I'm seeing all these beatitudes. They're all intertwined with each other. They're just continuing one after the other, uh, you know, building upon each other to, to create the, uh, the total 
lifestyle that we must live. It's not picking. It's not a picking and a choosing of one or the other. It is is a total thing that the Lord has been building on that. And so we see that um, even the word pure itself, it means that there's nothing that has you know uh, been can um, I guess added to it. Okay. If you look look at any product that you buy in the stores on the on the label and check the ingredients they'll have a list of this one this one this one this one all those things have been put together to make this product but the lord is saying the product of our lives must be pure which should only have one ingredient and that is the life of christ without yes. that one ingredient uh, then our life is nothing but with that ingredient with other things adding into it then it makes us impure and then it it re removes us from being able to enter in to the presence of the lord so you know if if we have that pure in heart um which is not a one-time thing it's a continuous checking because there's things yes, come sir. each day to us you know an offense will try to come here uh mm -hmm. you know uh you know someone might do this to you or or you might see something or whatever the case is, all these things are trying to contaminate that, that heart. So when yeah. we continually check our hearts and if we are pure in heart, uh, the outcomes of that would be uh, that the Lord will uh, release his self to us. His, mm -hmm. he, he release his help, his support uh, to whatever is required of us, as well as, you know, in John, I believe it's John 10, 10, that the Lord came, He has come to give us life and more, life more abundantly, which is yeah. He will give us all the things that is required for us. Our needs will be met, and also it says that if our hearts are pure, that we shall see God. Yeah. Seeing God, not uh, not necessarily some uh, you know some you know uh, mystical magical uh, thing that we mm -hmm. see Him, but it that's pointing to our personal. Uh, relationship with him, our personal walk with him, that as we are pure in heart, you will see that there is a a, a growth in our 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 intimacy with him, mm -hmm. our, our uh, in our personal relationship with him. We'll see that we are drawing closer and closer to him in love with Jesus. That uh, our hearts, because they are pure, now. It is the same life. It is the same heart as Christ. That now, now they can walk together, as it says in Amos three, because we are both pure. We are pure in heart. We can see God, and He will begin to reveal Himself. That intimacy, yeah. that relationship with Him, will begin. He'll begin to reveal Himself to us. That we will see Him clearly. We will see even the Word of God even more clearly uh, for our lives and. You know all these outcomes it just reminded me of 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 the life of David. You mm -hmm. know um, when Saul was rejected, and uh, Samuel went to to go and anoint David as the new king. Mm -hmm. You know the Bible records in 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 First Samuel sixteen uh, verse seven uh, when Samuel was looking at Eliab and saying, "Oh, he must be the one." and you know that must be this the one that should be the king because of his stature because of his appearance and everything but the lord corrected samuel and he said don't look at the outward appearance for yeah. that's what man sees but yes. god looks at the heart so yeah. we can see that um the eyes of god mm -hmm. they doesn't hear our doesn't hear us doesn't see us but he checks the heart Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and when, when I say he doesn't hear us or see us, I mean that because he's looking at our heart, he's looking at the motive, he's looking at what is driving that, mm -hmm. you know, uh, being pure in heart doesn't mean that we should be wearing white all the every day, you know, it's, it's, it, it is a matter of the heart, it's heart, something yes, that sir. is internal. So mm -hmm. the Lord will help us that, you know, that we, when we pray that we would ask the Lord to to help us to to open up our hearts, that He will come and encounter us afresh, mm -hmm. that we would have this uh, a, a permanent experience of holiness, that we would live it out each and every day of our lives. Mm -hmm. God bless you. Thank you.
Bless you. Bless you, sir. Amen. You, 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 you hit that point of, of nothing added, that purity of nothing added, because just as we see God, God sees us. And, that, and that's something because we, we are facing wherever we are, my brothers and sisters, again, all over where we are in a very practical way, depending on where you are. We're facing some stuff that's, that's boy, if there was something that's pointing at our hearts today, you know, just life and life in general to really kind of contaminate our heart. But thank God we learned that nothing added. And even Jesus taught that it, we can have, blessed are the pure in heart, because there's something that God really wants to do, not just... Us, we can see God, but God seeing us. Thank you, uh, uh, Josh, for that. Um, Brother Doy, as we go from that, we, let me just read it again. Uh, it says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Then we have verse nine, um, and I believe that was in chapter nine. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the, ch the children or the sons of God. But Doy, at, at what level does God want us to make peace? And then how can... We impact the world today as peacemakers, sir. Man, thank you, my brother. God bless you. Uh, well, um, first of all, I'll say that a peacemaker, um, as we see it from that particular scripture and all that supporting scripture, um, is someone who actually strives for peace. Um, he's the one that actually, okay, the good news translation of this that scripture that you just read, says, happy are those who work for peace. God, we call them his children. So a peacemaker is someone who actually uh, strive to actually make peace uh, between two quarreling parties. Uh, but the implication of that is that such a man must be someone who is acceptable by each of the two opposing parties in order to be able to reconcile them back to each other. So, for instance, the person has to be a friend to this, a friend to the other one, yeah. for the two of them to actually have listening here and to bring reconciliation between the two of them. And for, 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 for us, children of God, I think the first thing that we have to ensure is for us to make peace with God. Actually, yes. we are not the child of God if we don't have peace with God. Yeah. You know, the, the, the book of Isaiah 40, 48, verse 22 says, There is no peace for the wicked, says the Lord. There's no peace, says the Lord, for the wicked. Uh, a man that is not yet reconciled to God actually is not qualified to reconcile anyone mm -hmm. to do the work of a peacemaker mm -hmm. because you have nothing to offer. You can only give what you have. If you don't have peace with God, then you cannot reconcile men. Uh, to go. So the first level and most important is actually for us to ensure that we settle our quarrel with God. And you know what? Sin is the main quarrel between God and man. Yeah. Sin is the main thing that is that has separated us from God. You cannot be a peacemaker when you are not personally at peace with God or we have not reconciled with God. And first of all, a man must take that first step of repenting from his own sin. That's when you can actually qualify to be a successful uh, peacemaker who can actually stand between God and man. The next level is actually for us to be able to make peace with men. Uh, it is important for us to be peaceful with men around us. You know, the word of God says clearly in that uh, uh, Hebrews that we normally quote, Hebrews 12, verse 14, that follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. And actually, when that scripture says follow peace, if you link this scripture with Ephesians 2, verse 14, the Bible says, for he is our peace. Yeah. Jesus, it was referring to Jesus Christ there. So when the word of God says follow peace here, yeah, it means that when you are following Jesus, you are following peace. Uh -huh. it's, it's as simple as that. He said, mm -hmm. follow peace with all men. In other words, by reason of Christ that is in you, you are mm -hmm. supposed to be at peace with all men. And the Bible says, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. So you you have a responsibility, I have a responsibility to ensure 
that I am at peace with all men. And all men, in, all men here does not mean just Christians alone, both believers and unbelievers. Mm-hmm. And yeah. one of the things that I've noted is that we lose our integrity and our message to people when we are not at peace with them. If you are quarreling with a coworker in the office, or you are the one that is, you know, uh, that is, you know, in rank or that is, you know, in struggle with a colleague or a senior or a subordinate or, you know, in your office. You can't bring the message of peace to them. Actually, your life is already a contradiction to the message. So mm-hmm. such situation of not being a peacemaker actually makes the heart of men to become resistance to the message we preach. So if you're going to now preach now, they say, sorry, why, why are you coming to preach to me? You, when your life has not actually demonstrated it. So wherever we are, whether at work, in the marketplace, in the grocery store, anywhere, we are meant to be the, the, the people of peace that, is, that symbolizes peace. Yeah. That when situations will happen in a grocery store or, in a, or, or at the point of checking in, in the airport, because somebody is trying to cheat you or to claim, uh, you know, do something wrong with you, that you don't begin to fight right away. Mm-hmm. How can you come back to preach to that same person sometime in the future? Wow. Somebody has done something wrong with you, maybe in the bank and you are trying to do a transaction and the teller is not behaving very well. And you will always go to that bank all the time. If you have misbehaved one time, can you face that teller again? Mm-hmm. One day, you will, just, you will just find out that your life has actually contradicted your message. So you have to give up many things for the sake of the gospel. And one of them is that you must be at peace with yeah. men around us. I'll wrap up by saying that we have, actually have to be at peace with brethren too. You cannot be a good child of God while you are a bad brother or bad sister to another God's child. What mm-hmm. kind of prayer are you going to be praying to our Father in heaven when you are in struggle with a, in, in struggle with a sister or a brother in the same fellowship? Yeah. Yeah. God will say, go and settle with your brother. Go and settle with your sister before yeah. coming to talk because he's the father of all of us. Yeah. Uh, you, you cannot just listen to one person and not listen to the other. So it's important for us to be at peace, even with the brethren. And lastly, mm-hmm. we have to also seek peace for the land. The word of God encourages us to actually pray for our land. You know, the Bible says in that first Timothy 3, verse 3 to 4, it said, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God. He said, God, he said pray for all men. In that scripture, he, the word of God encourages us that we should Pray for kings, pray for uh, the authority over us. He said that we may live a quiet and peaceable life. Yes. That's the, that's the responsibility that we have to pray for our leaders so that you know there will be peace in the land. So you and I must seek the peace of Israel, must seek the speak of peace of Jerusalem, must seek the peace of the land where we are by ensuring that we're lifting up the leadership of, they may not be godly leadership, they may not be Christians, right. but it is our responsibility because we want the land to be peaceful to pray for our leaders. God bless you. Bless you, sir. We thank God for really for that, for that peacemaker where God in a very sovereign way, actually through Jesus Christ puts that peace uh, responsibility in our lives. Um, like I said, again, depend on where you are all over the world, my brothers and sisters. Um, when you see unrest, when you see things going on around you, because I know here in the United States, we always have something going on here. And it almost, I don't know if it would depend on where you are. It's like the, the fury of anger is being fed to us over, I mean, just, just, un, just, just over and over again. Even if we look at Maybe just a quick example. Um, the, the World Games in, in, was in Qatar. They're supposed to be playing soccer, but there's so much other political conflict going on. You know, that's supposed to be a games of peace, just in a natural way, but there's a lot of things going on. But here the Lord gives to us his own people. First, us being peace, to, having peace together, and then being the very vessels to bring peace on the earth. Y'all, that, that, that's, that's, um, I pray that would be something that we've been practicing and living every day. Amen. Let's, let's, let's see where we go to our next chapter. It says, uh, um, we're actually going to look at, let's look at righteousness. Uh, we won't look at verse 10 where it says those are persecuted. We're going to look at righteousness in, in three ways. Actually, it was actually Matthew five and six. 
which says, and let's read that. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Melissa, so what does it mean to hunger and thirst for righteousness? And then why must we pursue righteousness? What is God giving you concerning that? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I'm going to read just a part of that in the Good News Translation that might help mm -hmm. us. And then we'll discuss. It says, mm -hmm. happy are those whose greatest desire is to do what God requires. So when we're talking about righteousness, what it is, it tells us it's doing what God requires. It's righteousness. The Bible will show us in all kinds of ways that it's being in right standing with God. It's, it's thus winning God's approval. Um, I think of Cain and Abel. Cain did not win God's approval. Abel did win God's approval. He would have been considered righteous in right standing with God. Abel would have been. So righteousness is, um, it says, you know, hungering and thirsting for righteousness. It's a matter of our heart and our soul. Um, like brother Joshua was saying, you know, it's a matter of the heart that he's looking at. He's not looking at an outside. Are we doing all the activities that people would say we're righteous? It's what does the Lord say? So he says we should be hungering and thirsting for righteousness and we'll be filled. So um, in Psalm 42, verses one and two, the Bible says that as the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. So we hear the psalmist and we've heard, well, if you read the Psalms, you hear this kind of language much, this kind of yeah. desire much, this kind of, you know, longing much is is this desire of the soul for God, for my, my mind, my heart, my, my emotions, my, my will. I want, I need God. I want God. Um, and, and in fact, in Psalm 107, nine, the Bible tells us that God satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. I mean, this is our, our scripture in, you know, Matthew five in the old Testament, he fills the longing soul, the one that's hungering and thirsting for him. And he fills that with goodness. So, the, so, you know, the kingdom of God, we're not talking about hungering and th thirsting for food or drink. It's about righteousness. It's about peace. Like brother Adoye was talking about, it's about joy. And if we're hungering for those things, which are the good, correct things, then God says we will be filled with those things. You know, if we're, if we think practically on, you know, if we're hungering for food, you know, if we haven't had food, meat for three days and we're really hungering for it. We are going to be pursuing it. We are going to be going after it. We are going to be saying like, how, what is it that I need to do to get this meat? Or if we're hungering for popularity, you know, we have many hungers that in this, on this earth. Um, and many things that are pulling at us. If we're hungering for popularity, what are we going to do? We're going to do things to try to become popular. We're going to pursue popularity. We're going to forsake things that uh, won't bring us popularity. And we're going to go after the things and put ourselves out there So in the, in the hopes that perhaps we'll be popular. So the things that we're hungering and thirsting for inside are the things we're going to be um, going after. Now, what I will say about if we're hungering and thirsting for the things of the world, we may or may not get them. And what I will say is those things are not good in God's eyes. We, even if we get them, popularity, it won't be good. It won't do us good in the end. But God is saying if we're hungering and thirsting for righteousness, yeah. we'll be filled with that which is good, which yeah. will endure. And he says we will gain it. You know, going after earthly things, we may or may not get. But God is saying, if we go after righteousness, yeah. we will get it. We yeah. will. It's a definite. It's it's a promise from the Lord. So, we, you know, when I think of righteousness, I think of Jesus, of course, because the Bible says in Romans 3 that now, now that Jesus has come, this righteousness 
that doesn't have to do with the law has now appeared to us. You know, this is what we're responsible for because we're in the new covenant that the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ is now has now appeared to all and on all who believe. That's Romans 3, 21 and 22. And we know also that in 1 Corinthians 5, the Bible says God who made Jesus, who knew no sin, which mm-hmm. means he was in right standing with God. He was, he had won God's favor. We heard God over and over declare, this is my beloved son. I'm well pleased with him. Yeah. So, so Jesus was in right standing with God always. Um, and, and the Bible says that God made him who knew no sin to become sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God in him, not apart mm-hmm. from him, in yeah. him. So there's yeah. our there's our righteousness. If mm-hmm. we want to define righteousness, we'll say J-E-S-U-S mm-hmm. is righteousness. You know, it's it's that approval of God. It's God saying you are right and correct. And and thus what what you desire will come to you. Mm-hmm. We will be filled. Mm-hmm. Jesus always did what pleased the Father. He was the one in right standing with God and is. So yeah. that's our pursuit uh, to be yeah. for hungering and thirsting. We're pursuing Jesus. We're pursuing his righteousness. We're pursuing knowing him, hungering and thirsting for him to know him more, hungering and thirsting to submit to and learn from Jesus that we might be approved of God, yeah. hungering and thirsting to believe Jesus, to obey Jesus. All of that to be filled with his righteousness, which yeah. is winning God's approval. And, and how, you know, how do we, how do we pursue that? Oh, the first thing I think if we're hungering and thirsting, eat, eat the word. You mm-hmm. know, Jesus is the word that became flesh and dwelt mm-hmm. among us. Be in the scriptures, learn of the Lord and hear what he's having to say, you know, in, in the same Matthew that were uh, in the sermon on the Mount that we're studying, he said, you know, that we need to hear what he says and do it. Yeah. You know, if we're yeah. hearing what he says and not doing it, then we can't expect right. to be considered righteous. We can't be considered peacemakers. We won't be receiving mercy, you know, all of these things. But if we hear what he's saying and do it, we will be blessed. We will yes. be being filled. And I just want to end with this scripture that always, always <laughs> helps my heart. Um, it's our Lord speaking to us in Isaiah 55. Mm-hmm. I think this is the fitting end. He says in Isaiah 55, verse one and two, he says, Ho, everyone who thirsts come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in abundance. So that's what we will receive if we come to Jesus and yeah. receive from him uh, that which is good. Amen. Amen. To, to, to do what God requires, that whole thing, do what God requires. And then I kept hearing uh, Melissa saying, pursue, go after, be hungry for, the desire of. Amen. Amen. I pray that's still that that's still. Because, you know, our appetites change, you know, naturally and even spirits. I pray that will, that would always be all of our hearts is pursuing what 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 um, what God requires. Amen. Another thing, we went to chapter 13 and 14, um, um, the believer's righteousness. Josh, what does God expect those he has imputed righteousness to? What does God expect when you talk about believer's righteousness? What does that mean? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Um yeah, when we went through that chapter, there was many verses there, uh, which by because of time, we probably won't be able to read all of them. But uh, Matthew 5.20 uh, was just one that I, I can highlight at least. Uh, it says, For I say unto you, that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, mm-hmm. you will by no means enter uh, the kingdom of heaven. So 
right there we see that the Lord is already, um, you know, showing us that the way that even the scribes and the Pharisees lived, uh, they think that, you know, that's that's righteous. But for us, it's like the Lord is saying, we must go beyond that because their righteousness was uh, uh, outward. It was an outward righteousness, you know, um, and uh, we can see that the Lord, his expectation, you know, even from all that we've been talking about today already, is that it's actually an inward righteousness. He's pointing once again uh, to our hearts, saying this righteousness must be internal. It is an imputed righteousness. It is on the inside of us. And, you know, um, the out the the expectations that the Lord is that has for us is that is that those of us believers that are that are you know we're we're still living we're still here in our in our mortal flesh that we have died to ourselves that's uh, the one of the expectations that the Lord is ex, is expecting of us uh, to live for Him and not for ourselves that. We have died to ourselves, and in First Peter um, two twenty four, it says, um, "Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, all of us, having died to sins, might live for righteousness." By who, whose stripes uh, you were healed. So we see that uh, the Lord is expecting that um, what he did upon the cross uh, was that he died on the cross for us, but we also died, that we died with him, that our sins died that day, that so that we can live in righteousness. We can live this righteousness. And, you know, it's fitting that the, uh, the chapter is called the believer's righteousness, which shows us that it has been given to us. This righteous living has been given to us. It's now our our responsibility yeah. to now take that and 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 live it out. You know, in uh, in First John two twenty nine, it says that um, we know everyone knows that he is righteous, that God is righteous. Mm -hmm. So everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. So. Mm -hmm. We see now that this believer's righteousness has been given to us. It's now our responsibility to go out and go and practice. This is our our practice of living. But like Sister Melissa said, if you're not in the scriptures, if if you don't go to the scriptures, how would you know how to live uh, this life in various you know situations of life? So we have been we've been given the package, but maybe we haven't opened it yet or maybe we 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 just uh do what many people do is we just we 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 copy and paste if mm. if i may use that term we look at others oh that big church okay oh that is that how you behave as a christian okay let me copy and let me paste that into my life and let me follow what you know this church or this believer is doing versus going into the word of god ourselves and having the lord you know, work in our lives, ch chisel us and convict us and, and show us the right way that we must live. Um, so we see that uh, being dead to ourselves is one of the expectations of the Lord. The other one is that I saw from the book is, is an active faith. You know, the Bible says that faith without works is dead. And, you know, so an active faith means that we there there must be an action that we must take. We can't just say we're saved and just sit down and I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting for Jesus to return. You know, like mm -hmm. there's there's something else that the Lord is expecting of us. And you know, I just think of Rahab and how she 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 uh, you know saved the um, the spies. You know, mm -hmm. and it, she became you know if you continue to trace her life, like she's part of the lineage of even Jesus Christ himself. So it's, it's yeah. interesting to know that that faith, that thing that she did, the action she did, you know, and it even helped 
the the spies report back to Joshua and they were able to conquer uh, Jericho. Mm -hmm. um, so we see that active faith. And then just mm -hmm. uh, because of time, the last thing that I'll just say will be um, is good fruit. Is the Lord is expecting good fruit from our lives. Uh, and, you know, in, in Matthew also, we spent a lot of time later in the book in Matthew 7. And, uh, you know, I just, I went back there not too long ago and, um, and it says a good tree, uh, cannot bear bad fruit, mm -hmm. nor can a bad tree bear good fruit, mm -hmm. but every tree, uh, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore mm -hmm. by their fruits, you will know them. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I began to just look at it and many times we just look at the fruit itself, but. We never, uh, I guess, I don't know what they call it, maybe reverse engineering or something. We, t we, we go from the fruit and we work our way back, okay, now to the branch, and then we work our way to the tree, and then we mm -hmm. work our way down to the root, and then we work our way to the soil. Ah. So, it's, so everything starts from what we are planted in. So a good tree cannot bear bad fruit. It's because it's planted in good soil, and the roots can now grow and the tree can grow, the branches can grow, the branches can bud, and the fruit will come out. So we can't look at the end without coming back to the beginning. So mm -hmm. if, our, if our lives are not planted in good soil, then we cannot bear good fruit. There is no way possible for that to happen, as it says in Scripture, Matthew 7, 18 to 20, that mm -hmm. a bad tree can never bear good fruit nor can a good tree bear bad fruit. And the last thing is just our fruits, our fruits can, cannot flip-flop. So you can't have good fruit and then, bad, and then that fruit turns bad and right. then that same fruit turns good and then that fruit turns bad and vice versa. Like it, it's either good or it's bad. There's no in-between. So uh, thank God for that. Amen. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. Really un unrighteous, especially by that, that, that the, the being going back to the root, going back to where we really planted. What, what's really coming out of our lives? We have to look at ourselves, brothers and sisters, from wherever we are. What's really coming out of our lives? It really deals with where the really seed is and what kind of uh, ground we are. We're, we're coming pretty much to a close. We got about uh, maybe about 10 minutes and then we're going to be praying. Um, we're going to go to, Brother Dewey, I think we have one more question to ask a believer, but let's go to the last two questions. And then, Brother Dewey, what I want to do, we're going to go to chapters 13, uh, 12 and 13, which is the salt of the earth in the light of the world. And then um, I'm going to just share a little bit on the salt of the earth. Brother Dewey, after that, I want you to come in with the light of the world. And then there's a, there was, we, we were brought to actually a conclusion, Matthew 7, 24 to 27. I want you to take, if you can bring us all to a place where the, our, our footing is now, you know, not, not, it ain't even the end. It's where our footing should be and be coming from. Um, if, and chapter um, 13 that we, chapter 12, um, it talked about in, in, in verse 13, we were in chapter 12. It says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how can it be seasoned? It is thrown out for nothing um, and trampled under the foot of men. And when I was looking at that, I just wrote down a few notes very quickly on that. One of the things that when we brought out, that was brought out to us when we learned this, and this is something that was more so connected, was it is a representation of our covenant between God and us. When we talked about we are the salt of the first thing, you know, when I see salt, you know, at, of just from a human standpoint, when I see salt, I'm talk. I, I think about cooking. I talk about flavor. I talk about you know you can put a whole bunch of things in whatever you're cooking. But if if you could put just you and you don't need too much salt, a little bit of salt can take whatever that is and make whatever flavors you're trying to enhance come out. And the first thing it represents my and God's covenant relationship. That's what. You know, when Jesus said, you are the son, our relationship is first before any other thing, because if we're going to be flavor for the earth or flavor for anybody else, it got to start with us and God, our own personal relationship. And then it talks about um, another point was brought out. If we lose our savior, if we lose our flavor, then we are not effect. 
if we lose God's flavor, even in our own life, what effect can we be? We can be loud, we can be noisy, we can be boisterous, at the same time have no effect. But if the, the real the salt, the real covenant of, of what we have in Jesus Christ is still, still alive, still present, with all the, the blessed things co- consummated in our lives as being salt to, t- to touch the earth, then um, it's good. But if we lose it, it's like a warning. The last thing, we literally carry God's sweetness in the earth, the aroma the flavor. If we come in contact with people, I always say this, and I'm going to turn over to you, Brother Dewey, so you can take us to the light of the world and then bring us to our conclusion, my brothers and sisters. When we have our church fellowship and we're still kind of meeting online, we get a chance to meet one Sunday at one of our sister's house, and then we get a ch- we're trying to get a chance to come together. I always said, when somebody comes in, no matter where they come from, no matter walk, whatever walk of life they come from, they come from the world. What will they come in and experience? When people come into your church, your fellowship, your, your gathering, all that stuff, when God sends somebody, he draws somebody's spirit to you, not necessarily who are they or where do they come from or what are they doing and all, not even looking at that. When they come, who and what do they encounter? Do they encounter somebody that's judgmental? Or do they actually encounter the very aroma, the very flavor, the very fragrance, the very salt of God? And this is what Jesus says specifically. You are the salt of the earth. Brother Doyle, if you can uh, bring us in a place where chapter, I think it's chapter 14, we are the light of the world. And then how, you know, how does it affect the world need light? And then if you can bring us to chapter 7, verses 24 to 27, Jesus says, if you do these things, Melissa was saying that, if you see and hear me and do these things. Yes, sir. Thank you, my brother. Um, The word of God is very clear in that particular scripture in Matthew uh, 5, verse 16. He said, let your light so shine before me that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. The earlier verse is what actually points out to the fact that um, we are the light of the world. Actually, from verse 14, he said, you are the light of the world. A town, a city that is built on it can never be hidden. And the reason why God has placed us here is because there's so much darkness all around you know, the world. You know, Isaiah 60 verse 2 says, for behold, Darkness covers the earth. Yeah. And thick darkness is over the people. But the Lord will arise. The Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon your life. So the whole essence of God placing us here is that we will be the source of light to our environment. You know, the whole world is under a very thick darkness that is that has covered the people because of sin. And you know what darkness does? Darkness makes people to stumble because it's like somebody being in the dark. Uh, he's not able to see. He's not able to actually, you know, a, a man that is uh, in darkness actually is blind. Uh, darkness makes men to be blind. They are, they, are, they are blind to the environment, blind to the feelings of others, blind to God's purpose for their life, you know, blind to even things that makes them to stumble. So when a man walks in darkness, he makes mistakes and yet he doesn't know, you know, why he's making that mistake. He's living life by trial and error. And he falls into the same problem over and all over again. And the Lord says, for you and I, he said, your light has come. He said, arise and shine. In the beginning of that, yes. he said, arise yes. and shine. For the glory of the Lord is upon thee. So God expects you and I, yes. as his children, to actually shine the light of Christ that is in us. And that light, Christ actually is our light, is that life. And we're just expected to alive the life of Christ, to be lived through the platform of our life. And you will see the light all around the place. Mm-hmm. We are not meant to hide our light and this is why the word of god in the wrapping up of this scripture when jesus christ has finished all his instruction in that closing he said if you hear these sayings of mine and you do them he said you are like a wise man 
that is building or building his life upon the rock. But if you hear these sayings of mine and you do not do anything about it, let me read that scripture briefly for us in verse 24. I'll quickly read it and I'll wrap up with this. It says, Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the flood came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand, and the rain descended, the flood came, and the wind blew and beat on the house, and it fell, Bible says, and great was the fall. Yes, sir. I want to just wrap up by saying, men and brethren, God in his mercies has taken us through all these instructions for the last 14 months. Starting from Matthew chapter 5 from verse 1, how he opened his mouth and went on the mount and opened his mouth and he started teaching them up unto this conclusion in this um, uh, Matthew 7 verse 24 uh, to 28. You know, the closing of that scripture, he said, and so it was when Jesus had ended this saying that the people were astonished on his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority. Yes, and not, as, not as the scribe. So all the instructions that he brought, he was bringing it from the authority from the throne of grace that he had as God himself. That look, all of this thing that I'm saying, it is to equip you. You will notice that all the content of this instruction, they are all that we need to actually live this life. Yeah. If you look from the beginning, the matter of being a peacemaker, being poor in the spirit, being meek, you know, be merciful, all of these things they are equipping for our own lives to actually make us strong you know, disciples, such that when the wind of life begins to blow, you and I, we are standing. I want to beg us by the message of God that as we wrap up this study, that we take it on as a challenge, that yeah. this will not be the end of kingdom lifestyle for us. Even yes. though the study is ending, but this will be the beginning of we actually living this as a lifestyle. That all this instruction, this principle, this uh, this precept that God has laid on in our life, precept upon precept, line upon line, that it will become the 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 template for living, the foundation yeah. for living on a daily basis, such that even when we come back next year and we are starting a new book by the grace of God, we are standing strong, we are mm -hmm. actually ready to run with the Lord, and this has become flesh in us, not just in something that is theoretical in our head, but something mm -hmm. that we now actually live for you. Yes. Oh, bless yes. you. Bless you, sir. Bless you. And thank God for our time together. Uh, my brothers and sisters, this is for God has sent his word to us. He has sent his word in such a uh, understandable and very powerfully uh, understandable way where we can actually take this word. This word has literally for our lives. If we just, just take it and eat it and digest, let it be down and see it. This word is supposed to be coming flesh alive in us, the lifestyle. So what we're going to do, are we going to pray? And I want to uh, thank our, our Nikkei. Thank you. I got the name. Thank you for sending in those uh, comments and encouraging us to it, it, with that. I want us to take time to pray for everyone us wherever we are around the world. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to pray. And then I'm going to ask each of our panelists, they're going to come and play. And then we're going to be, we're not, we're not, we're not concluding. We're coming to an end. We're actually coming to a, a beginning, a, a pursuit, a, 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 a uh, overtake a recovering all. That's that's really the theme of the MLR we're about to step into. God has God is setting us ablaze to move on, to step into. So let's let's all pray for where everyone. This is not just us as the panelists praying. Everybody, wherever we are, let's cover the whole earth. Let's cover ourselves right now with God's mercy. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you and we thank you right now. We just thank you, Father, for what 
you have done. For Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. How did your mercy come to us, Father? You actually did us as you, as, as you did Mary. You brought us to your very feet. You brought us to your feet as even Martha in the world was cumbrous about and other things was cumbrous about, so busy and distracted. You actually gave us an opportunity every Saturday, Father, in our time of Bible study, Father, our time of going to church, even on our private time when we went up to the mount to come and be with you. Your disciples come to be with you and right at your feet. Jesus, you opened up your mouth through your service and you taught us the very principles of your kingdom that your kingdom would come and your will will be done in our lives. Lord Jesus, you came to bring us the very kingdom, your very kingdom life within us. For you said the kingdom of God is not meat nor drink, but it's righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Spirit. And then Jesus, you said the kingdom of God is living right inside of us. And Lord, you brought that truth, that living reality by your spirit. You have brought this to us. So Father, do we keep praying, let your kingdom come and your will be done? Father, we let your kingdom come and your will be done and let it be done because, Father, we hear your stains, Lord Jesus, and we're going to do them because the torments are going to come. But, Father, I bless you and thank you that you've given us the pathway, the opportunity to be founded on the rock. We bless you and thank you for it in Jesus' name. Melissa, if you would come and you would come and you would just pray for us and you brothers and sisters around the world, keep praying. After that, Brother Josh, if you would just take up from where she is, just step into that. And then Brother Doya, if you would come right behind Josh for just thanking God for just giving us just this opportunity, just to be as we have our panel all around the world, this opportunity to come that the Lord would have us to move forward. Amen. Mm -hmm. Melissa. Yes. Yes, our Lord Jesus, we thank you for spending you, the last 14 months teaching us you called us up. You've been imparting to us instructions for this kingdom lifestyle. They, you alone know how to live the kingdom lifestyle. And you have seen fit to labor on us to help us to understand. And now we hear you saying now, he who hears, who has heard these things that I've said for the past 14 months and does them, you will be building wisely. And But those who have heard the last 14 months and do not do them, you will be called foolish. It will not go well with you. So, Lord, we thank you that now you are saying you have given us instructions. Now we are to move forward and do them and obey them, Lord God, and that you, by your spirit within us who are born again, give us the power, the ability, the willingness to do what you require, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that you have said that we are the salt of the earth, that we are, you in us is the solution for our generation, Lord God. It's you in us is what will bring goodness to the earth, Lord yes. God, and that you are wanting that not any would perish, but all would come to a knowledge of the truth. So you are putting us forth to pursue, Lord, to pursue this kingdom lifestyle and to bring it to the earth, Lord God, not by word alone, but by word and deed, by doing it, by carrying the life of Christ and growing up into him who is the head. So Lord, we are, I'm, I'm just committing us to you now in Jesus name, Lord, move us, Lord, Lord, endue us with power from on high that we may go forth, Lord, and live. Fill the earth, Lord, with your kingdom, that it would come, Lord, as it is in heaven, that it will be done on earth, Lord. We are praying this, that it will be for your glory, that you will have your way, that men and women and all on the earth will know you in truth, the one true God and Jesus Christ, whom you've sent. So that yes. we more that that we may glorify you in yes. Jesus' name. I pray. Yes. Amen. 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 Bless you. And Lord, we continue to pray, Lord, and Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for thank you, Lord. all that you have done, Lord. Lord, how can we say thanks to you, Lord, for all of these uh, Bible studies, Lord, all of these teachings, all of these. Uh, breaking down of, of of your scriptures, Lord, to our own understanding, Lord Jesus. Lord, you are 
such a faithful God, Lord, and we just appreciate you and thank you for for all that you have done, Lord, and even what you are going to do, O oh Lord, in and through our lives, Lord, as we live out this kingdom lifestyle, Lord Jesus. Lord, who, who are we, Lord, all across this world that you are so mindful of us, Lord Jesus? Yes. Lord, it is by your mercy and by your grace, Lord, we thank you, Father God, for yes. your for your love and for your, your care towards us, O oh Lord Jesus. Yes. And Lord, we are praying, O oh Lord Jesus, we are praying, Lord, that each and every uh, uh, session that we've had, O oh Lord Jesus, Lord, that it would be, Lord, hidden in our hearts, Lord, that we will not sin against it, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Lord, that this kingdom lifestyle, Lord, Lord, would be who we are, Lord. It would not be yes. a book. It would not just be a book sitting on the shelf, O oh Lord, because we, we, we say we have finished it, Lord. But Lord, Lord, we pray, Lord, that this book would finish our old life, O oh Lord Jesus, yes. that we would live out, Lord, this new creation, Lord Jesus, that you have made us to be, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord, grant us this life, Lord Jesus. Lord, every day of our lives, Lord, that we would live out this life, Lord. For without this life, Lord, we, we just can live the kingdom style, O oh Lord Jesus. But, but with your life, Lord, you give us, Lord, the kingdom lifestyle, Lord Jesus. So help us, O oh Lord. Us, Lord, God. each and every day of our lives, O oh Lord Jesus. Lord, that we would not forget, Lord. Lord, that we would remember, Lord Jesus. Lord, for you said, O oh Lord, that those that do it, Lord, they are the wise ones, Lord, that build their house on the rock, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray, Lord Jesus, that this will be our portion in the name of Jesus, Lord, that none of us, Lord, would have that crash, Lord, because we have built on the sand, Lord, because Jesus. we didn't hear, Lord, because we didn't obey, Lord, because we Jesus. didn't do what you said, Lord Jesus. Lord, Jesus. so we pray, Lord, that you would help us, O oh Lord Jesus. Give us the grace, Lord, to obey you, O oh Lord Jesus, all the way, Lord, every all word, way. Lord, that yes, you spoke God. to our hearts, Lord Jesus, even Jesus. the morning, Lord Jesus, even morning, Lord, even yes. even the being pure in heart, Lord, even Jesus. showing mercy to others, Amen. oh Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord, every part of this lifestyle that you have spoke to us, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray, oh Lord, that we would be, Lord, Lord, that living epistle, Lord Jesus, living out every day, Lord Jesus, what you have said, oh Lord. Lord, that when people see us, Lord, when they interact with us, Lord, when they can, when they touch this life, Lord Jesus, Lord, they would know, Lord, that they have been, that we have been with Jesus, Lord, and they would know, Lord, that they they would, uh, they would desire this life, Lord, for themselves, Lord Jesus, Lord, that we may, uh, uh, we may, Lord, pursue, Lord, we may overtake, Lord, and without fail, Lord, recover all, Lord Jesus, all, Lord, yes. every soul, oh Lord Jesus, Lord, yeah. you have paid. For each and every one of them, Lord, you you said in your word that we have been bought with a price, O Lord yeah. Jesus. Lord, you you paid for each and every one with your blood, O Lord Jesus. And Lord, I pray, O Lord, that you would help us, Lord. Yeah, Lord, so that this, this entire world, Lord Jesus, Lord, that we would recover all, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Every soul, Lord Jesus. Lord, every issue, Lord, in this land, O Lord Jesus. We pray, O Lord, that there would be a recovery, Lord Jesus, of yes. all, Lord Jesus. So, Lord, yes. thank you, Lord, for preparing our hearts, Lord Jesus. Lord, yes. for, for, for making us, Lord, Lord, to live out this kingdom lifestyle, Lord Jesus. Lord, yes. that we may be prepared, that we may have capacity, Lord, to live out and to recover everything, Lord Jesus, that the yes. enemy has stolen, Lord Jesus. We thank, thank you, you for all of these things, Lord. In yes. Jesus' precious name, we pray. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, for showing us mercy. Yes. And giving us the opportunity uh, to sit at thy feet, even for this past 14 months. You called us to the mount, and Lord, you have given us the enablement to keep coming back. Father, we give you praise. We want to thank you, Father, for not many people have this opportunity. There are many of our colleagues that are still church goers that are still dancing and just wallowing in iniquity and thinking that they are on their way to heaven. 
Jesus. But Lord, it has pleased you in your mercy to call us out yes. and to draw us even unto yourself. Father, we are grateful, God. We give you praise, oh God. We yes. worship your name. We do not take this for granted. We thank you, Father, for these mercies that you have shown unto us. Your mercy, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Lord, we have come to say thank you, Lord. We have come to bring our heart of gratitude unto you, O oh God, as we Lord God, even wrap up this study. Lord, we want to say, Father, from the bottom of our heart, we are grateful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory, all the honor, Lord, for all that you have done, oh God, in this past month. Thank you, Father, Lord, for the quiet work of eternity that yes. you have already done in our life that you will continue to do. Thank yes. you, Father, for the seed of eternity that you have sown, oh God, God, in the tablet of our heart all around the world, Lord, as we continue to come into this study, you have shown yourself faithful, Lord, always coming our way, bringing your word unto us. Lord, yes. we give you praise, we worship your name, Lord, as yes. we begin to Lord, go even in the conclusion of this matter. Yes. Lord, we ask, O oh God, just like you have already revealed your truth unto us. You said, I still have many things to say unto you. But you cannot be it for now. But however, he that is the spirit of truth, he will guide you into all truth. He will come yes. and he will guide you into all truth. Yes, he will Lord. not speak of himself. He will only speak of me. And whatever yes. thing I say unto him, that is yes. what he will speak unto you. Father, yes, we ask, O oh God, that your Holy Spirit yes. will continue to flesh down this truth in our yes. hearts. In the name of Jesus, yes, Lord, Lord God. this truth will be our reality. Jesus. In the name of Jesus, your word says for, 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 for the Lord by Moses, but grace and truth come by Jesus Christ. Father, yes. we ask, oh God, that even as you have given us your truth, you will release unto us commensurate grace, ah, even to walk in this truth. In the name of Jesus, that we will not be afraid to bear the truth. We will not be scared by the weight of the truth. But Lord, you will grant unto us the grace even to begin to walk in this truth. In the name of Jesus, until it becomes our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray, oh God, that as we depart from this study now, Lord, Jesus. This word continue to go with us yes. in the name of Jesus. Continue to bring it back to our memory. Yes, God. Instruction. Lord, yes. that you have taken us to continue to engrave it in the tablet of our heart. Continue yes, to rub it in, oh God, in our yes, spirit. Lord, Lord, as we walk, as we talk, as we discuss, Lord, let it be our words in the name of Jesus. Yes. Father, we give you praise. We praise worship you, your name. To you be yeah. all the glory, all the honor. Thank you, Father, because you Thank are you, able Jesus. to do much more than yes. we ask or think, yeah. even according to your power that works yes, in us. To you be all the glory, all yes, the honor, Lord. Jesus. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name, we pray. Amen and amen. 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 We thank God. Um, for uh, this time where we get a chance on this, um, this um, not conclusion, but just bringing it for a time of pause uh, where the Lord um, has given us for our kingdom lifestyle uh, teaching. Um, what I would encourage us to do is to um, not let this be the end. Go back over it, the, 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 uh, the, on YouTube, they're, they're all there. Even I actually went back and I started looking back at the quest for God. There's so many things that were still, still there, still alive that needed to be looked over again. And so um, this is going to be our last one. You're going to be printing our announcements uh, up there. So we'll be uh, journeying back on the 14th. The 14th of January is when we'll be back. What we'll be learning at that time, I'm not sure. So if you need still counseling at that time, this is still available. 
at alivingseed.org for counseling is still available uh, there. And again, like I said, mark down your calendar for uh, January 14th. Uh, we'll come back and then we have all the uh, places of contact. If you still want to get information, we'll know as soon as it comes out of Boko uh, from Brother Billy, what will be our next teaching uh, that we'll have. And so continue uh, to go over and to live out this kingdom lifestyle. This is this is a life that the Lord has given us. Our MLR starts on the 7th through the 11th of December. That's next week. Pursue, overtake, and recover all, maximizing our Rhea boss. That was last year that the Rhea boss uh, we had there. God has made room for us. My brother, my sister, Rhea boss is the entryway. And we're going to learn to pursue, overtake, and recover. So please, uh, be at your your places if you can be in uh, locally there. If not, uh, it'll actually be shown. But we're looking for for our centers all over um, the uh, the world that'll be connecting in. Amen. Also, be the crossover. Um, our Bible, like I said, our Bible study um, will start back on the twenty third. If you can see right there, the crossover will be uh, December thirty first, going to January first. So that's, that'll be also available information. There's ways to be contact there. Please contact those people near to you. And then the visions retreat, January 4th to January 7th. That's for everyone. There were many times it was just, when we were just in Nigeria, it was just there. But now God has taken it. Like he told them he would send it all over the world. So now it's there for us to cross over and the vision retreat those days, January 31st. And then January 4th to the 7th for the visions retreat. And again, we're going to reassume back on January 14th, 2023, a brand new year. Amen. If there's not anything else, um, and oh yes, we want to hear from you. Feedback questionnaires. Um, this is a link to questionnaire to be sent to you via email of the broadcast platform. And so please um, contact your people. If you, if you don't get one and you do want to give some feedback, please, if you do get one through your email, please fill it out, send it back because they're always there where the team is actually saying, oh, how can we do this better? We've been blessed beyond measure. But if there's some place that maybe you might see that might be a help, thank God for it. And it'll be considered. And we're going to look forward to things continue to grow and multiply all over the earth. Amen. Amen. If there's not anything else, amen. We're going to share the grace for this time where we are just, uh, get a chance to spend this last time together if you want to unmute yourself. And it's going to be a time until we get a chance to get back together from all over the earth again. Um, look forward to being with everybody. Um, we started out with great numbers and there were some of us that faithfully slayed through it. We're going to look for even disciples to multiply more and more. So let's share the grace. May the grace, grace. of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Christ. Bye. 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 Bless you all. God bless you. Bless you. So good to see you all. Bless you. God bless you. Bless you. God bless you all. Hey there. Bless you. God bless you. Hey, Carla Duke. We see you. God bless you. We see you over there. Bless you.